shock department. Windows 7 now has more users in Vista, according to Janko Partners. Quote, browser market share and operating system market share white paper, unquote. Not the most thrilling read, but the report says Windows 7 is being adopted twice as fast as Vista was in its initial months. The report also says that Microsoft's browser share is back to 1998 levels, i.e. is at 67.73%, Firefox 17.88%, Google Desktop and Chrome 5.4%, or 5.4% as normal people would say it, Mozilla <laughs> at 1.36%, and Safari at 0.98%. I find it like less than a percent for Safari I'll buy, but that seems a little low for Mozilla. Maybe, maybe Mozilla dropped. One percent. I'm, I'm a Chrome user I'm through and through. That. I, I I I I was a hardcore Firefox user yeah. until recently. My buddy Grant was actually complaining because there aren't there isn't proper like color correction in Firefox or Aww. color correction in Chrome as compared to Firefox, oh. but. But that's, uh, yeah. I, I've, a browser that automatically updates itself without having to bug me about it, I'm all for that. <laughs> Chrome's the only one I'm aware of that does it. Anyway, in the Who Cares department, Apple said it sold its one millionth iPad last Friday. And that, quote, iPad users have already downloaded over 12 million apps from the App Store. I think Patrick is responsible for at least half those downloads. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the very uh, that very same Friday, Apple released the highly anticipated iPad 3G. It's essentially the same iPad that came out a month ago, but with 3G data built in along with the GPS receiver. Really? GPS too? Yeah. Mm, nice. Now, while Apple has touted that the iPad 3G is unlocked, most early adapters are stuck with AT&T's offering given the unusual SIM card used by the iPad. Technically, any carrier can make a compatible cell card for that iPad. But it's basically like a half-size SIM card, and AT&T, of course, ordered theirs early. Props to iLounge, by the way, for taking a close look at the low-cost 250 megabyte a month eight, a megabyte a month AT&T plan. It's basically 250 megabytes a month for 15 or unlimited for like 30 bucks. It's pretty cool. And another, none of the plans actually require you to have an extended contract. So you're traveling, you can sign up for a plan. They found out it is amazing how fast you can burn through 250 megabytes. Like seven megabytes for Google Map Check, three pages on Facebook is a megabyte, and you basically a lot of people blew through it in the, their 250 megabyte cap in two or three days because <laughs> the websites they are bigger than you think, and that's with AT and T's pathetic 20 megabyte cap on files sized for anything other than the iTunes trailers. Forget about big software updates or movie downloads; they're going to tell you to go find a Wi-Fi connection. You might want to go with a $30 unlimited plan. Again, there's no contract length. You turn it off at any time, but you aren't going to run into any overage charges. Continuing with that, iLounge said that the iTunes trailer for Avatar was 40 megabytes. While the iTunes store previews look pretty good, all the reviews we've seen say just about every other avenue for video over 3G is compressed into an ugly pixelated mess. Now, the ABC app is outright blocked. The rumor has it that they need to update the app in order to get it running. Skype tells you that you need a Wi-Fi connection because of basically contract restrictions. Right. And if you were thinking about sitting in uh, basically the field watching, I don't know, YouTube or Netflix videos, Get a 3G modem and an iPad 3G. <laughs> yeah, or it, like like the 3G. Like I use a 3G modem with my iPad Wi-Fi. It works fine. The iPad 3G. If you try to watch a YouTube video, it basically looks like a Rothko painting. Really? Lots of swirly. Me it's really compressed. But using a similar wireless. Set up from another provider, got you better service? Basically, or? like YouTube. <laughs> is that what I'm saying? Well, it's a 3G. It's <laughs> funny, right? Because, okay, so 3G in San Francisco is a nightmare. People have been going yeah. outside of uh, outside of San Francisco. A lot of people are reviewing. The iLounge review is great. They actually have comparisons showing you, like, the, the iPod um, or the iPad 3G playing YouTube, and it just it compresses everything down yeah. in a really bad way. Bandwidth optimized. Yeah, bandwidth optimized for no bandwidth. I was really bummed that Magellan, Navigon, and TomTom didn't release iPad-ready versions of their GPS navigation software. Copilot Live HD is out, though. It's like 30 bucks. And in more cheerful news, Engadget is reporting that it looks like there's a Steam client coming for Linux users on the heels of the OS X client for awesome. Steam. Very, very cool. Yes. Good gaming coming soon for, <laughs> what, the Mac platform and Linux? Yes. Crazy, crazy talk. <laughs> and Ubuntu dropped its latest update, 10.4, a.k.a. Lucid Linux, last week. Lucid, Lucid Linux. Linux. Excuse me, <laughs> Linux. Got Linux on the brain. The upgrades to the free, as in beer and speech, operating system include a new social manager, music store, much faster boot-ups, and some simpler, less painful default applications. Right, so instead of like the GIMP, they have another photo editing app as a default. I, I love the GIMP. The latest version is epic. 
I just, I'll, I'll try it again just for if you. If you've never tried Ubuntu, go ahead and download that. and Absolutely. Give it a shot on older hardware. Make it, <laughs> make it feel new again. And it's, yeah, it's, it, it's boot time is ridiculously fast. <laughs>